What's up guys? Welcome back to another War of the Visions video here on Fort Misery Gaming. And today guys, I wanted to do kind of a two-part video. We're going to go over one little bit of piece of news we have for an update we're going to have on Wednesday as well as an account overview for where I'm at about a month into the game. I think I'm like 32 days or 33 days playing the game, something like that, because I think I got my 30-day my login reward on like Friday or Saturday or something. But anyway, Let's first start off with the news. So this is actually some pretty cool information, which it seems every two weeks, according to the JP version, um, they get a new scene and story, which is actually really good that a game actually continuously puts out the nor normal story content continuously every two weeks. Um, now, if you any JP players are out there and say this is not true, and you guys are not getting story every two weeks, it's like once a month or every five weeks, something like that, let me know. That's just what I heard from in my Discord from people that were looking up online. But it has been about every two weeks for Global so far, but we are going to be getting Chapter 5, Scene 3 coming to the game. Um, so that's pretty much all they have for us. But to talk about Chapter 5 Scene 3, why it's actually pretty important, especially for a lot of us that are working on new heroes like Orlando and Ramza or even Gafgarian, or maybe you pulled dupes of like Frederica, Medina, Engelbert, whoever you were focusing on, on your, you know, quest to get these Final Fantasy Tactics collab units. On top of we're still getting free multis every day, um, you probably have a lot of things to invest in. So. Why that's super important is if we go to our missions, you guys can actually see at any time what you guys got for different rewards. And what I want to note is that at the end of a scene, it seems guaranteed we are getting these certain rewards. So in the update, once you guys complete scene three, you guys should be getting these rewards. So if we go through chapter one, you go through chapter one, scene three, at the end of every scene three, we'll go through all the chapters just so you guys are you know aware. But the end of every chapter one, scene three, you guys see here, you're getting a total of uh, three to two combinations of 25 lots of an elemental prism or an elemental fragment, six rainbow spheres and two rainbow fragments. Now this is pretty universal across the board. Um, also universal across the board, it looks like we are gonna get a thousand Vizior. Now in chapter one, I think they got give you a little bit extra stuff. They give you like 10 silver cubes, which is like nothing to us now. <laughs> Cause you can only level that up to level 60 on those. Um, and then when we go into chapter two, scene three, once again, you guys see there, again, a thousand Vizior. And then you guys see here, it looks like they just got rid of the silver cubes um, and they got rid of one of the 25 lots. So there is two 25 lots of prisms, six rainbow spheres, and again, two rainbow fragments. We go into chapter three, scene three. Once again, 25 lots of your prisms, two elementals. I think they're the same two. Were they light and dark for the last one too? That's kind of weird. Um, and then six rainbow spheres, two rainbow fragments, 1,000 Vizior. Now we go into chapter four. And again, so maybe it is always going forward on the scene three, it is gonna be the same rewards, which it seems since chapter two, they've been the exact same rewards, which has been 25 dark prisms, 25 light prisms, uh, your six rainbow spheres, 1,000 Vizior, and two rainbow fragments. And why this is important for us, for us players right now, is we are really bottlenecked on resources, even with all the stuff they added to the collab. They gave us, you know, some rainbow fragments and some rainbow spheres in the event. They gave us some more we could buy in the two, three million download shop. They gave us three uh, rainbow spheres in the event event currency shop as well as one rainbow fragment but still man it's you need a lot you need a lot just for your six star awaken um you need a 10 rainbow spheres and five rainbow fragments so if you plan to build both ramza and uh orlando say you didn't have a light elemental and a lightning elemental hero you're looking at just for their six star awakens i'm not calculating any of their five star and four star awakens where they do require rainbow materials is you're looking at minimum there of those two units, you're needing 20 rainbow orbs and then 10 rainbow fragments. That's a lot. So this is super important. You guys are gonna get uh, six rainbow spheres and two rainbow fragments along with 1000 Vizior. And it is pretty cool that it is 25 light prisms. You guys can use that for Ramza. Unfortunately, not lightning prisms, but another way you guys can supplement your lightning prisms, um, which we kind of talked about in one of our other videos, but I briefly want to touch on that before we go into the other paid function of what the new story can bring for you guys. If you guys go to your mod shop and you guys go to your Final Fantasy Tactics 
Every day you guys can get 10 elemental prisms and 10 fragments of your choice. It will cost you 2,500 to buy all 10, depending what you need. So you need, I believe it's 360, 350 around there, uh, both the elemental prisms and the elemental fragments. Um, I think the fragments are harder to get from my, from at least from me. Um, I'm, I mean, I have spent money, so I still have two uh, 100 summon on two different elemental prisms I want. So prisms aren't a factor for me personally, but possibly for you they are. Um, but you do get those more frequently in your daily, um, your daily resource pool, which you can do three times a day. So you guys will get a lot of prisms that way. Um, so be on the lookout for those. You guys can also get them in the Chocobo expeditions as well. But, you know, I think definitely a Light and Lightning are ones to look out for, guys. If you guys are building Orlando or you're building Ramza, uh, both of them are going to be super beneficial for you guys to get. So don't forget about this because we have another, uh, another 30 days. So what this actually means is when the event ends, I believe the event ends in like uh, something like 16 days or something like that. Uh, we can back out real fast and check real fast. It'll tell us right here on our event page. Uh, but... Because what I did not do for the Final Fantasy 14 event is if you plan ahead and you over farm currency, because see this event ends in 15 days, I guess like 16 days for us, because I think we actually get one extra day for whatever it says typically anyway. Um, you guys can farm those extra um, metals uh, from, from the events and you guys can another, because it says 29 days. So that's an additional, what is that, like two weeks? Didn't it say 29 days? I think it did. Um, then you guys can actually use those even when the event's gone. But you have to have the currency, obviously. So yeah, 29 days. So this is up for a whole nother month. So that's why it's important every day. And I'm gonna probably make a separate video as like for stamina, especially once we get the update on Wednesday. I may wait till then to like do a comprehensive video on that. But uh, to definitely commit a certain amount of stamina every single day, maybe outside of weekends, um, but definitely during the week. You want to focus a lot on this event because not only are you going to need to buy the shards, which I still got to get Ronda shards, I still got to get the job materials, I want to get some of the weapon stuff, and I still got to get two rainbow spheres and one rainbow fragment, but you want to have an excess of materials to get these finite elemental materials because they are super important. So yeah, I just want to make sure you guys are aware of that. Um, also, if you guys are really worried about leveling, if you're... You know, if you really want to get your guys leveled up, you guys can get also some rainbow cubes and large cubes. I wouldn't go after the... Actually, I wouldn't even go after the, the gold cubes because you can actually get those in co-op right now. So, uh, but yeah, so that's just something to keep in mind just so you guys are aware of. But the last thing I want to go into is the story pack. And this part of the video is only going to pertain to a paid player because the story pack is only available if you guys pay cash. So if we go back to the fourth one, for instance... These are going to give you some extra elemental prisms and some extra rainbow spheres and some extra rainbow fragments. So basically, in a nutshell, what it is, it looks like you're going to be getting uh, 50 of each element uh, for the prisms and the fragments. So if you guys want to calculate, say I'm 50 short of Orlando or 50 short of Ramza, instead of committing 2,500 resources for a fragment lot or a prism lot in the shop, if you guys want to... Um, focus more right now on finishing your shards, finishing your rainbow materials, finishing your job materials that you got to get for those units, then you may want to also um, just worry about, you know, using the, the pack, which is going to cost you a thousand paid currency, and you're going to get all these all these uh, rewards right away. And the cool thing is, since we we're already through scene two, you're going to get all the way up through everything through mission six automatically, and then you're going to get seven, eight, and nine after you guys complete scene three. So... That's uh, pretty cool. So you guys, in total, if you guys are going to spend some money, you guys are going to get nine rainbow spheres and uh, one rain and, uh, sorry, three rainbow fragments. And, and not actually spend money. If you still have paid currency left over, you don't have to actually spend the, what is it, like 10 bucks or whatever it is to get your, uh, I think it's like 10 bucks for a thousand paid. Uh, it's, is it? Or maybe it's like 16 bucks, because I think you get like 500 paid currency with the $8 uh, stamina pack. So something like that. So remember, just like 15, 16 bucks to get a thousand paid currency. If you guys have kept some of it from the events, or, you know, you plan to buy, you know, two stamina packs or something like that, 
um, over this week. Save that paid currency. This is a very good use of it to getting three rainbow spheres and one rainbow fragment on top of the other elemental materials. So I just want to say that, guys, just so you guys are aware, this is what you guys for sure should be getting on Wednesday, assuming nothing crazy happens and they don't change the rewards in some way. But if they don't, this is what you guys can look to get, okay? So to finish up the video, I just wanted to go over and show you guys some of the key units I've been working on on my account since I started the game. Now, I'm going to be straight. I am not free to play. <laughs> you guys know I'm not free to play. I wouldn't have 30,000 Vizior if I was free to play still and have Orlando and Ronza both in my, in my box. So I have bought probably... Uh, I think I've bought in like four of the stamina of the eight dollar stamina packs. I've bought a couple of times. I've bought in the one dollar stamina packs. Um, I've bought in the daily every day. Um, that's five bucks to get you three hundred and five pay, three hundred regular. Um, I bought one chocobo pack um, early on in the game, and then I bought one monthly rainbow pack for rainbow fragments, and then I I bought in also all of the uh, bonus vizior packs except for some of the ones uh, that you'll see here currently in the shop. I still have these left to get. I'm just kind of waiting out to see what my final uh, daily pulls are before I uh, commit to buying all that. Um, but I bought all of the first round for the release, all that, and then I also bought uh, the three collab packs. So yeah, I've spent a little bit of money. <laughs> I don't know if uh, you classify me as like a, as, as a regular whale, a super whale, a mid whale, a dolphin, you know, all the kind of depends on your prerogative of what you classify. So spoiler, I have spent money. I'm not free to play. So when we look at my units, just know that. But this is my Frederica. Definitely the unit I have furthest along as a UR. Uh, Roms is going to be close behind her. I can actually get Roms to the same limit break status as Frederica once I get enough event currency. Um, I need like another... I need like another 20,000 event currency, 25,000 event currency, I think, to get the two rainbow spheres I need in the shop and then to get her, uh, to get her limit break crystals. So, uh, but that's Frederica. Um, the abilities I've set on her are these currently. Um, I've concentrate ranger lore. Um, and this is a PvP build because getting the extra range is going to give you the extra ability to snipe down and how the AI works. So, I have that set up. Um, and then if we look at the gunner class. Um, I only have arm shot max on her main, um, and then I wanted to get leg shot maxed out because it has that immobilization, so it's really, really strong. Um, so that's what I have for Frederica so far. Um, her gear is a plus three, I believe, critical uh, uh, Roz, so Roz gun. So that's what she has for gear. So let's move on to Stern. Stern, he's sitting right here uh, at 79. I got a bunch of characters at 79, but those are his stats currently. Um, as far as his abilities, he's actually very well developed in the ability pool. Um, I like self-sacrifice and HP up, so he gets a little bit of a buffer when he uses hazard form on turn one, and then he can also, um, you know, survive usually even a Medina limit break. Um, as long as the Medina is not like at 89, I should survive that hit, which means that I can in retaliation sure can hurt if she's faster than me. Or if she um, hits me on her turn one with Limit Break, then I can still take her out, at least with the Shuriken. And that'll be a really good swing for us. And then hopefully if there's no one on that side, then I can obviously try to move into Shuriken somebody else or do whatever. But yeah, so I, I, I know some people like the Agility build better. I like the HP up better, personally. So you guys see there, he's got, uh, looks like 2,000 HP. So pretty good. All right, so, and then for a Soldier class, I have right now work, got Hazard Form completely maxed out, Hazard Break maxed out. Those are his two big hitters. Uh, that's a large damage ability. It does consume HP, but it hits like a truck. It is super powerful. Um, and then I'm working on Drain Force next, just because it's another small ability to use. It takes only 20 AP. Um, it's supposed to like 29 AP. Uh, and it lets you heal back up, does some damage. So I think it's a pretty good utility skill he has, since a lot of his kit revolves around consuming HP. Um, and then Ninja, I actually have almost all of it maxed out. <laughs> I have a lot of it done. So the only things I have left to do are Decider of Fate, Hide, and Poison Mist. So all of the actual um, attacking skills are completely maxed out with him. I just have his TP skills to left on Ninja. And Ninja class, I think, is by far his optimal, um, at least in PvP, which is where I primarily use him. So super happy with my Stern. I think he's fantastic. Um, so let's move on next to our boy Engelbert, my main man. I love this guy so much. I, I favor him a lot. <laughs> 
but uh, you guys see here, he's almost at 4,000 HP, um, and he's got still pretty decent attack. You guys see him at 344, uh, so still super good. Uh, and then we look at his abilities. I'm currently having him on, I believe, Paladin and Knight, um, but I don't know where... I, I'm confused of where to really put him permanently, especially in PvP. I heard so many different people say different things. Um, I'm trying Knight right now, just because in the Knight class... Uh, we actually have a lot of different variety of abilities. So, of all these different breaks he has, he has a magic down, he's got a, a chance of doing disable, he's got a chance of doing agility down, he's got a chance of reducing AP, um, he's got a chance of reducing attack, he's also got divine healing, which restores his max HP and recovers amount of HP raised. So another healing uh, TP skill as well. Uh, so I think, you know, just, I think this class is super utility good. Um, and then Paladin, obviously, his main, um, I have this already completely maxed out. So, his main class, completely done. Um, so, Sandy Cross is a pretty good uh, damage skill. Um, just straight up AoE damage skill around himself. And then Blade Bash, obviously, super, super good medium damage and chance to stun for one turn can be super important. And then he's got his defense up and he's got some healing and he's got his uh, chance to uh, survive at low HP if he dies. So... Um, and I definitely think uh, he has two HP up skills, so whichever one it doesn't matter. But I think HP up and then Holy Knight's Protection are his two best. Um, Holy Knight's Protection is going to raise max HP and defense. So I think those are his two best overall, um, personally. So next we're going to move into Medina. Medina's kind of been on the back burner for a while, but I do have her at 74. Uh, but you guys see here, uh, she does have Shiva on her at Awakened, Awakened, two-star Shiva. So we're going to level it up. It's only at level nine right now, but I didn't know that Espers actually reset back to zero when you awaken them. I didn't know that, uh, because this is the first time I awaken an Esper. So yeah, I got to build Shiva, uh, Shiva back up, uh, and then it's going to raise her magic up a lot. So, but pretty decent magic. Um, her agility is pretty good as well. 55 is a pretty decent number. So uh, HP, though, is very, very low. So only 1,200. So very, very squishy. But she is only 74. So she'll go up a lot when I get her job class up to 12 with my other units that I've been working on. So as far as her ability set, um, I have her on Savior's Protection Magic Up. And I have her on Ninja Class. I like Ninja Class just because it gives you access to the TP skills. She's got hide, she's got, uh, I, I mistakenly, I should not have leveled up Shark at all. That was a terrible idea. I didn't realize at the time that this is based on physical damage, and Medina sucks for physical damage. So, I didn't know that, um, but yeah, we'll work on those eventually. But I'm not, she's not really a priority. I'm just letting her kind of sit there for a bit. I use her in co-op just for speed farming, but, uh, yeah, uh, that's where Medina is. Uh, next, Ramza is the next big thing we're working on. We got her, like I said, at the 79 cap. Uh, we almost got her bravery max. She was max bravery earlier. Um, then I think she died in the Shiva raid, so that's probably why she uh, went lower. But I still got a lot of work to do with her. I'm only at uh, job 11 on her main, and I'm only at job 5 on ninja. So I got to get those to get her stats up. So I got to farm these materials eventually uh, throughout the week. Uh, but then her abilities, I haven't really even touched them yet, to be honest, so I don't even know where I'm going to put her yet. Um, I just know you want to acquire JP up so you get that JP increase to try to build her faster. Um, so, like I said, she's going to be a work in progress, but I fully plan to get her TMR uh, before the event goes away. So I'm on a very good road to that, and I still probably am going to do some more summoning to get some more materials. Alright, Orlando, again, my goal is to TMR him because I did pull him early off camera. <laughs> I wanted to do two single summons and two single multis and I got him on my second multi, so it was pretty pretty insane. But I plan to build him on Samurai, um, but we'll see what happens on that. So, but I, there isn't really much to go into because I haven't really put anything into him besides leveling him up. So I don't really, there isn't really much to talk about him yet, but he will be built in the process. Um, and that's pretty much it for the units I've invested in so far. Um, for other units I have, I have, um, I have Matchery, I have Gilgamesh, I actually just pulled Rob on the free daily today. So um, I have Eileen, I have uh, Ayaka, she's going to be a good raid unit. Thancred's pretty much just going to sit in the box until the Final Fantasy XIV event comes back. 
Um, what else URI wise do we have? Um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, and then those go into our MRs. So that's pretty much it for my box review. That's where I've gotten it in 30 days, guys. So I'll update you guys every month where we're at. I hope to have three TMRs by next month. My goal is to get Frederica shards over the next like three to four weeks through dailies and when she appears in the shop. Um, I do get, I think like around, I think guaranteed it's like around like, what is it like, uh, 19 a week guaranteed. Um, if I don't get any in like the rare summon, um, the rare summon or normal summon pull thingy or dispatches, cause you get like, uh, I get two per day, um, in her missions and then what, at least one time a week, her elemental thing comes up where I can buy her shards. So yeah, guys. So that's going to be it for today's video. Uh, let me know how you guys are doing. If you guys have been playing just as long as me, where are you guys at within 30 days? How many units do you have at a certain level? How many of you guys at like 79, 74, 89? TMR, if you guys are going pretty hard. My first TMR was Yashtala. Um, but let me know how you guys are doing and progress wise in the first 30 days of the game ish. Um, and also let me know if you guys are excited for story chapter three scene three completion to get some extra resources guys and you guys are into the story let me know if you guys are liking chapter five so far also let me know what you guys think could possibly else be in the update for all we know tomorrow could be another notice of something added because they've done that before where they're like do waves of news and because they don't have an exclamation point in the news on your lobby you never know until you click on it so yeah guys let me know what you guys think they could add my other main thing that they could add obviously would be the ex stages to this event if they do that i'm hoping they do that because farming this is slow um i'm hoping they do that plus we'll probably be able to get some more mission reward event currency to help us out with buying more things in the shop so i'm holding off for that and obviously we know we're going to be farming some story uh some story next week as well and i'm also hoping hoping but they are going to bring us some uh, double uh, double drops in story as well, so we can even get some help with farming our JP materials. So, and they did say they were going to like increase the overall drop rates of those eventually, but we don't know when that's going to happen because they stuck auto repeat in without saying anything. So maybe they're going to increase the drop rates as well. If they already haven't, maybe they already did increase the drop rates. Who knows? But thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys did enjoy today's video, make sure you guys leave a like down below. Hit subscribe if you guys are new. Ring that bell so you guys are notified on our next upload. And I hope you guys have an awesome day wherever you guys are. Please be safe out there. And please, if you guys are in the need of a guild, uh, we have three spots open in the Fort Misery, Zen Misery Guild. Uh, we, uh, you know, we're not really strict on your power or anything. As long as you play, you know, every day, log in, do your guild wars, donate, all the normal guild stuff. That's all we really require. Uh, we would like you to also be in our Discord. So we will have the link in our Discord below. So join up if you guys are interested in our guild. Or if you guys just want to hang out with us, talk more about War of the Visions, other mobile games. Or if you guys also want to get some discounted gems as well. So let me know, guys, on all that stuff in the comment section down below if you have any questions comments, concerns, as always. I look forward to hearing from you guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Later, guys.